Blender is a powerful open source 3D software used for a variety of reasons. And at the end of this video, I'll become a pro. Welcome to the finale of my journey of becoming a Blender Pro. On this episode, I'm going to show you guys how I spend the final days of this challenge evolving from zero to hero. Also, stay tuned to the end of this video. I finally make my own animation. Enough talking. Let's get right into it. On days 16 through 20, we're going to kick off the finale with CG Boost Blender Launchpad course. I decided to go with this course because I wanted a better understanding of Blender. So I decided to pay the $60 for the course and I'm happy I made that investment. This course literally breaks Blender down into every detail you can learn from its interface all the way to its rendering. I highly recommend CG Boost. It's not just a good course, but it's a good community as well. The CG Boost Launchpad tutorial teaches us the workflow to make a low poly car animation. In this section, students begin modeling a simple project by learning the essentials of 3D modeling, such as manipulating vertices, edges, and faces. In this course, CG Boost focuses on instilling best practices in the modeling process, introducing concepts like subdivision modifiers and proportional editing. Zach Reinhardt, the instructor, has a reputation for clear explanations, making this course a very easy place to follow, also making the topic very approachable. Modeling the low poly car was very easy to do. The tutorial was very clear. I loved how the finished product came out. Now we're just going to add some luggage and some details to the car. The further I got into this course, the more confident I felt with my controls. After we finished modeling the car, we moved into the background. We started off the background by modeling six individual rocks. To make the bigger rocks, we just made groups out of those rocks and formed them together. Then we're going to use some pyramids to cut in some slices into the rock to make it look a little bit more organic. After modeling all the rocks, we're going to do this same type of exercise, but just for creating trees. And this scene is slowly coming together. Then we're going to create assets out of those objects and spread them across the map. The Launchpad course dives into creating basic materials and applying textures guiding students through the process of adding realistic models and colors to their scene. After adding our finishing touches to the materials, we're going to grab our assets from our rock and trees, then we're going to weight paint those across the background. This technique saved us a lot of time. I can definitely see myself using this more in the future. Then we're going to add an HDRI to our background to add some lighting. We're going to use a cube shape to add some fog. Then we're going to get into the animation. The first step is going to be animating our background to move forward to make it look like our car is driving. We're going to add our finishing effects. Then we're going to record our car in different camera angles. And that's going to be it. If you want to check this course out, the link will definitely be in the description. On days 20 through 23, I decided to stick with CG Boost. I enjoyed the Launchpad course so much, I decided to check out another course. I decided to try out the Robotic Planet course. This course breaks down hard surface modeling and was very informative. I rate this course 5 stars. This course was very interesting for sure. Just learning the workflow of a 3D professional will definitely help my future. This course begins with an overview of the project, explaining the exploration behind the design, and providing initial concept art. This phase helps students get into the mindset of creating a future basic bot. CG Boost places an emphasis on pre-production, introducing basic principles of sci-fi design, and establishing the overall mood and style for students to aim for. After doing this course, I realized how important concept art is for your projects. The primary focus of modeling in the basic bot is you learning how to use hard surface modeling. Students learn how to create a complex robot structure, intricate pipes, cables, and metallic textures. This is for a futuristic feel. Now we're going to add the finishing touches to our basic bot. We're going to add the camera to the front face, then we're going to add some small screws to add some details. The bevel modifier is used extensively to round out edges, giving models a polished, realistic look. In hard surface modeling, the bevel is key to achieving the right balance between shape and smooth edges, making robotic parts look both functionally and visually appealing. 
CG Boost explains how to control the bevel width and segments for different parts of the model, demonstrating how even subtle bevels can make a significant impact on the realism of the metallic surfaces. Moving on to the next step, we're going to add a small decal to our robot. I decided to go with my name and three fours. I also learned the importance of using the mirror modifier. I can definitely see myself using this in the future to save time on my modeling. I did run into a problem trying to use an array object for a bevel. It didn't want to work properly for me. I couldn't find a solution, so I just decided to move on. Now we're moving to the Blender Shader Editor part of the course. This discusses how to make your own materials from scratch. Procedural textures are a major focus. They allow us to create complex, customizable materials without relying heavily on image textures. Procedural methods are particularly useful for large sci-fi environments. We also added some noise textures to add some roughness and make our metal look more realistic. We also used some Voronoi textures to get some more crack-like effects, also to randomize the paneling. We also used the mix shader and color ramp nodes a lot in this process to make the robot look more realistic. This was definitely a phenomenal course for learning texturing and adding color to our robot. Now we're going to be moving on to the next step, rigging. This was my first time ever learning how to rig a character in Blender. This part of the process was fun and I enjoyed learning how to rig. While during this course, I learned how to set up basic armatures using Blender's armature modifier. By adding bones to specific mechanical parts, this made the robot movements more easier to control. Once the rigging is complete, CG Boost covers basic animation principles for mechanical objects, explaining how to use keyframe for movements, rotations, translations, and also scaling. Rigging the bones to one parent bone made the animation for this project so much easier to handle. I highly recommend this course. This was a great introduction to rigging, and it will definitely help my Blender future. After we finish rigging all the bones on our character, we're going to add the final steps to our animation for the robot scene. In this process, we're going to dive right into the keyframes to make each movement. After finishing up the final steps for our animation, we're going to start with the background. We're going to start off by modeling some grass and some rocks. We did a similar exercise to the one we did in the launch pad course by modeling each grass strand individually first, then joining them into a group to make a bigger strand of grass. And we're going to spread them across the map using weight paint. Now we're moving on to the compositing, which is the final step of this course. We're going to add some details and effects to the robot scene. We're going to add some motion blur, textures, and grain, and adjust the contrast for the colors to pop better in the final render. And that's going to be it for days 20 through 23. I hope you guys enjoyed the final project. Also, be sure to like and comment on this video. Let me know what you would like to see in the future. Now we're going to move on to the final seven days of the challenge. It's time to finally get out of tutorial hell and put everything we learned all together. I'm going to make my first Blender animation. Things are going to get interesting. Let's not waste no more time. Let's get right into it. To start my animation, I decided to start off by sketching my ideas with Clip Studio Paint. I wanted to concept art my work before I started my project so I can have a clear destination where I want to go. The idea I will be going with is an ancient temple that holds a statue that is trapped on his throne. I also got some reference images from Pinterest and Google to help with my concept direction. After sketching up the concept, I decided to block out basic shapes first. I modeled my throne first. I used a lot of techniques that I used in my previous tutorials and courses. I'm just going to start off by using some basic cylinders and squares to block out the throne shape. When modeling the throne for the statue, I wanted it to look like it's been there for a while. I wanted it to look old and ancient. Before modeling the statue itself, I blocked out a cube for reference for the size I wanted to go with. I want to keep this project low poly, so I'm going to move to the next step, modeling the main character, our skeleton statue. I'm going to start with the skull and move all the way down to the ribs, down to the legs. I wanted to keep this project simple, so I didn't overdo it with my modeling. I just used basic shapes, for example as cubes, spheres, and cylinders. I modeled my character in a sitting position. The most important thing for this part was making sure the proportions was right. Now I'm going to add some details to my character. I'm going to add some face features, then I'm going to add a crown. Moving to the next step, I'm going to add some stone into the floor. 
I wanted the tomb to look aged, so I added some details to the stone by changing the vertices on each one. I modeled each stone one by one, and it did take a good amount of time out of this project. So if you have any suggestions of how I can do this process faster, be sure to leave a comment. Moving forward on our project, we're going to add the crystals to our scene. I wanted to make the crystals look as real as possible, and to get that natural look, I added some bevels on the vertices. The next step is going to be modeling each crystal one by one individually to get the small crystals, and to get the big ones, I'm going to join those into groups and modify their sizes. Then I'm going to just spread those around the scene and get them to look as natural as possible. The most important part to make them feel natural is just varying the sizes and the colors. Scattering them around in different angles help too. I really enjoy modeling the crystals. I love how they came out and how they look in the final render. I also decided to add some crystals to the skull of the statue. I wanted the statue to look aged. Next we're going to move to the floor of the scene. I did struggle here a lot. I tried to get the grass to seep through some of the stone, but I couldn't get it to work, so I just skipped that idea. Moving back to the stones, I added a subdivision modifier to make the stones look more organic and real. I really love how the stones came out. This was the exact idea how I wanted them to look. Now I'm going to add some textures to the stone to make them look more organic and natural. Then I'm going to do the same with my crystals. I decided to go with a baby blue color for my crystals. And for my mushrooms, I went with a gradient purple. I wanted them to look like magic mushrooms. As you can see in the video, I added the mushrooms, the wall, and the pillars. I forgot to record this part of the process. Now we're going to move to the conclusion of the project. I decided to make a roof with a design and add a light behind that so it can have a unique light source. After that, I'm going to add my final touches to my lights and my composition. Then I'm going to add some keyframes to add the animation and that's going to be it for this animation. And that's going to be it for my challenge. I enjoy recording this 30 day challenge for you guys and can't wait for the future. I know I have a long way to go in Blender, so stay tuned and hit that subscribe button. And that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I had so much fun recording this whole process for you guys. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the great content that I have planned in the future. Be sure to hit that like button. Let's get this video to 1k likes. And that's going to be it for you boy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time.